Thanks for tuning in to Healthy Planet One, where we discuss healthy living from experts in each of their fields. This is your host, Patricia Starr. And your co-host, Kimberly Knock. Welcome, everyone. And today's guest on Healthy Planet One is Dr. Marnie Turvel, MD. And we are going to be talking about Want to Heal? Change Your Mind. I know this is going to be really interesting. So welcome, Dr. Marnie. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Dr. Marnie. Yeah, wonderful. We're excited to have you. So Dr. Marnie has been a medical doctor for over 30 years and uh, owning her own functional medical practice now called Outside the Pillbox since 2013. So you had a shift um, after 16 years as a conventional pediatrician. She um, will understand that you left um, due to some of your own health issues. And you're going to discuss all of that with us today. So um, one of the most uh, interesting things um, to a lot of people today is, you know, what made you shift from conventional medicine to a more functional or integrative approach? And what's the difference? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question because, it, you know, it's happening more and more that doctors are switching from con- conventional medicine to functional medicine. And for me, it was... Um, I guess I can say it was thrust upon me through circumstances. So I was very happy in my career as a conventional pediatrician. I loved my work. Um, And I suddenly got really sick. And I actually ended up leaving medicine for a while. And in coming back, I learned functional medicine on my own without even realizing I was learning functional medicine. And my first entry was in how did I change my mind, and I don't mean like change my opinion in this case. I mean, I literally had to change the way my mind worked to get started on healing. And from there, I just learned one more thing after another about what is it to really bring the body back to health. And after I pretty much recovered, I learned, I discovered that I'd learned functional medicine. So it was kind of funny. I didn't look for it. I didn't, I didn't make a conscious decision. It's and, what I needed to get healthy. Right. And, and I, I've seen that. I'm an I'm a integrative health coach. So some of my lecturing um, physicians, like Dr. Pedre with his gut and Dr. Mark Hyman, um, I know he <clears> had some issues going on. Dr. Frank Lipman, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the shift is caused from their own uh, experience that leads them into another path of, of real healing. So, um, so what, what were some of the health struggles that you had and how did you overcome them that, that led you on this new path? Um, do you want me to talk first about the difference between conventional and functional medicine? Cause we didn't quite finish that. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure, sure. I, I promise I'll come back. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But I, th- I think it's an important difference if people don't know, because many people still haven't ever heard of functional medicine and aren't familiar with it. So um, conventional medicine is also frequently referred to as Western medicine or known as allopathic medicine. And um, it's what I learned in medical school. It's what all my colleagues learned in medical school. But I, I don't think any of us actually knew what we were learning when we went into medical school, which is a pretty bold statement, but I'll back it up by saying, you know, people choose to go to medical school because they want to heal people. They want to help people. Mm -hmm. They want to help make people healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought I was doing for the first 16 years of my career, except I will say that I frequently, you know, in pediatrics, uh, the wave of illness that's come over our culture um, was slower to hit pediatrics. And I actually left conventional medicine just as it was starting in pediatrics. So, but it it was well underway in in the adult population. But I was very frustrated in the last few years that I was doing pediatrics because I kept having kids come to me on more and more medicines. And I thought, what, what, what is this about? I didn't have any idea what it was about. It just bothered me at some deep level. So in conventional medicine, we are taught to take somebody's group of symptoms and 
figure out, oh, that's this diagnosis. And once you have a diagnosis, you're taught to use medications and or surgery to manage the diagnosis. It wasn't until I got sick and got out of medicine that I actually realized that there was nothing I was taught in 16 years of pediatrics and four years of medical school before that that was actually about getting people's health restored when they became ill. Wow. You know. Well, Marnie, I'm going to interrupt and, you because I want to ask you, what year was it that you left conventional medicine? 2006. Wow. And you were starting to see uh, children coming in with um, a lot of problems that were, were they coming from the medications that they were taking? Well, I'm sure some of them were. I mean, I worked at that time in um, in a Medicaid clinic, so an underserved population. Uh-huh. And I got, you know, what I just noticed was that the new patients that were coming in, kids, were already on several medications. And that just didn't sit right with me, even though I didn't. I didn't know that there was anything outside of conventional medicine. I mean, I knew there was chiropractic. I knew there was acupuncture. I knew there was homeopathy. But we were taught that those aren't medicine. I so, love it. So um, I mean, it's true. We really were taught that. I we were taught it. to be very wary of people who went to see those other types of practitioners. Wow. Um, and, you know, I, I, I believe that has changed to a degree, but I don't, I can't imagine it's changed very much because if anything, conventional medicine has gotten more, um, more against anything that's not pharmaceutical or surgical. I believe and you're right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, anyway, I want to just get back to the difference. So uh-huh, yeah. conventional medicine is ex- oh, and I, I want to not completely bash it because conventional medicine is outstanding for mm-hmm. acute care. Yeah. If you have an acute illness or an injury, you want a conventional doctor, uh, emergency room person, surgeon taking care of you because that's what, it, that, that's what conventional medicine excels at is putting the brakes on an emergency situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it really, truly cannot handle chronic illness. I mean, it can handle it in that it can manage it for the rest of your life. Sort of. <laughs> but who wants that? Right. Like, you know, very few people want that, but they, they go and they see their doctor and their doctor says, this is what you have to do. And they're like, okay. You know, because we've given all our power away to the doctors. So let's come back and come for a circle to what functional medicine is. Functional medicine is actually what medicine was before pharmaceuticals came into vogue. (laughs) (laughs) Functional medicine is, and and it just got out of vogue because pharmaceuticals took over in a, in a really sweeping way. So the new and modern specialty of functional medicine started in the late mid to late eighties, I think. So it's about 35 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mark Hyman, as you mentioned, Dr. Mark Hyman is one of the, uh, fathers of it. Um, Oh, I'm blanking on the name, but I can see him right in front of me. Joe Pizzorno is one. Right. Mm-hmm. He's more in a great, I, he's, I guess so. Yeah. Um, no, I'm trying to, Oh, bland, uh, uh, yeah. Christopher yeah. Bland right. is um, was really known as the father of functional medicine, the modern version. But anyway, um, and and he got to it by trying to get his his son, who had significant developmental disabilities, healthy, and he succeeded, which is it was really impressive. Um, anyway, functional medicine is about identifying the root cause of your symptoms and conditions. And giving your body what it needs to heal and taking away the things that are damaging it. So functional medicine is about restoring health, 
predominantly through lifestyle changes. And it works. We yeah. can get people with chronic illness better all the time when the people are willing to do the work. The problem between choosing conventional medicine and functional medicine, besides the cultural bias that, you know, conventional doctors sit on, a, on some fancy pillar of, of godlikeness, which we don't <laughs> deserve, <laughs> is is that um, when you go to a conventional doctor, all you have to do is pop the pill they give you or the two pills or the five pills or the ten pills. Mm. You don't have to change how you eat. You don't have to manage your stress. You Mm. don't have to actually get a full night's sleep because Mm. your conventional doctor will tell you that those things aren't important. Wow. Right. And that is like, I, I, I don't get it. Like, but I used to say that I used to say it doesn't matter what you eat. And now I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh. That's the main cause of almost everything. Yeah. So in functional medicine, people have to do work. Healing is not, it's not a magic pill. It is taking care of yourself which if you were born in the 60s and beyond, you never learned to do. <laughs> Seriously. Um, not as a kid, right? What did we learn? We learned to drink, drink diet soda and eat Twinkies and Ho-Hos and Little Debbies and <laughs> Doritos and Fritos and frozen dinners. And we not learned only, more and more to that. Sit. Not only that, but, you know, in the... <clears throat> 50s you had to walk to school it didn't matter if it was raining or snowing we had to walk up uphill both ways in the snow barefoot right <laughs> but but seriously i mean you know every generation has hyperbole but uh, of, of what we had to struggle through but but as kids we did we rode our bikes places we walked places um our kids don't do that my kids don't do that um Actually, my son does, but not very far. But nevertheless, the point is we were in the midst of this cultural revolution that was full of so many amazing, new, tasty, convenient, sexy things. And no one stopped for a minute to ask, is this good for us? Right? So... We grew up as kind of pleasure aholics, if you were, if you will. Um, you know, it was all about getting pleasure from our food, from our cars, from watching TV. It was about living a convenient, pleasurable life, and it's made us all really unhealthy and sick. But we don't want to do the work or so we don't want to do the work, not, but so, you know, having to spend time thinking about that stuff and give up our conveniences and our pleasures is really hard. And I do want to say you don't have to give up pleasure to take care of yourself because I have a whole lot more pleasure eating a healthy diet now and sleeping a full night and being healthy a whole lot more, like orders of magnitude more pleasure in my life Mm -hmm. than I had when I was sick and, you know, eating yummy, you know, eating standard American food that is, you know, a, a party for your taste buds. Healthy food can be, as Kimberly knows, healthy food is a party for your taste exactly, buds, too. This is what I do all the time. But, yeah, this is what I do. But you just have to, right, you, you have to change your taste buds. You know, there, there's yeah. yep. food chemistry and all that other stuff that makes us literally get addicted to those foods. Mm-hmm. and. And we do have to change our taste buds and change our minds um, because we have to get over the addictions to those foods. So one way of changing your mind is addiction. So, you know, kind of the, the, the reason I called this topic, want to heal, change your mind, is because it, it's like double and triple entendre of, you know, we have to make different decisions. We have to actually change what's going on in our mind not just decide differently, but, but 
change the structure of our brain, the structure of our thoughts. We have 